Have you ever wondered if Chinese, Koreans, and Japanese can understand each other? Well, you'll find the answer and some examples in this six-minute long video. Hello, language enthusiast! Welcome back to Multicultural Lingo, the channel where we celebrate the diversity of languages and cultures around the world. Today, we're diving into a fascinating topic. Can Chinese, Koreans, and Japanese understand each other? This question isn't as straightforward as you might think. At first glance, these three languages may seem interrelated but in fact are quite distinct. In this video, we'll be examining these languages, their similarities, their differences, and the fascinating question of mutual intelligibility. Let's start with Chinese so that we can then compare it with the two other languages. Chinese is a fascinating and intricate language, with its own unique quirks and characteristics. One of these is its writing system. Unlike alphabetic languages, Chinese uses characters, each representing a word or a concept. Unlike English and European languages, you cannot know how to pronounce a word by reading the letters in it. In Chinese, you have to know the character to pronounce it. These characters can be written in either simplified or traditional forms. Simplified characters are used in mainland China, while the traditional ones are more complex and used in Hong Kong and Taiwan. To make up for the complex writing system, the Chinese language has a rather straightforward, easy grammar. There's no need to worry about verb conjugations or tenses here as these concepts don't exist in the traditional sense. Word order is key, and context often provides the necessary cues to understand the meaning. But perhaps one of the most intriguing aspects of Chinese is its tonal nature. In English and other languages we use tone to express emotions, feelings. In Chinese however, tone can completely change the meaning of a word. For example the word ma can mean mother, horse, hemp, or scold, depending on which of the four tones you use. It's like a linguistic roller coaster, where the slightest shift in pitch can take you to a completely different destination. And don't even get me started on Cantonese Chinese which has at least six different tones. Please remember these three aspects because they are really important to answer the question we started this video with. Now, let's turn our attention to the language of the rising sun, Japanese. Japanese is a fascinating language with its own set of intricacies. It uses three different writing systems, hiragana, katakana, and kanji. Hiragana is the most common, used for native Japanese words and grammatical elements. Katakana, with its angular lines, is used primarily for foreign words and names, as well as onomatopoeic expressions. Both hiragana and katakana may look like characters, but are actually syllabic alphabets of 47 characters, each of which represents a sound. You can learn it and know how to pronounce words, just as we do with letters. Now kanji is where things get really interesting. Many Japanese words can be written both using kanji and hiragana. Japanese kanji are characters that Japanese people borrowed from China many centuries ago, and they are exactly the same as traditional Chinese characters. This means that a Chinese person can look at Japanese kanji and understand the meaning of a word or even of a sentence. At least they can tell you what a text is about. But here's the catch they won't be able to pronounce any of the Japanese word correctly. That's because while the characters are the same, the pronunciation is completely different in Japanese. Similarly, a Japanese person who knows kanji can read a Chinese text written in traditional characters and understand some parts of it, but won't be able to read it aloud correctly. It's like two people reading the same book, but hearing different stories in their heads. Japanese is not a tonal language. It's easier to pronounce and read if you know the hiragana alphabet. However, this language has a very complex grammar and the formality of the language changes based on who you're speaking to, making it even harder. Last but not least, let's explore the Korean language. Korea has a unique phonetic alphabet known as Hangul. This phonetic system is quite different from the character-based writings of Chinese and even the hiragana and katakana of Japanese. Hangul is more akin to the alphabets we're used to in the West. Each sign represents the position of your tongue and mouth while you pronounce it. Putting together two or more signs you get a word. This can make it easier for newcomers to pick up as they can learn to read and write Korean relatively quickly. However, the grammar is another story. Korean grammar is complex and shares many similarities with Japanese, both being agglutinative languages. They use particles to indicate relationships between words, and the verb typically comes at the end of the sentence. This means that for Japanese people Korean languages is easier to learn because it has a very similar structure. Of course the opposite is also true, but don't be fooled. Despite these similarities, the Korean language has its own unique pronunciations and rules. Also, many centuries ago, Koreans used the Hanja writing system, based on Chinese characters. 
Although Chinese characters continue to have some limited use in the modern language, especially in academic, historical, and religious contexts. So, while you might find some commonalities with Japanese, Korean is truly its own entity. Its phonetic alphabet, combined with its complex grammar, makes it a fascinating language to study. Korean, with its unique script and grammar, adds another dimension to our Asian language exploration. So, let's give an answer to our question. Can Chinese, Koreans, and Japanese understand each other? No, they can't. Chinese people can partially understand a Japanese text if it's written with kanji, but only if they know traditional characters. Also, Korean and Japanese languages are similar in grammar, but the words and their pronunciation are still very different. It's clear that these languages, while sharing some common threads, are distinct in their own ways. From the shared Chinese characters in Japanese kanji to the similar grammatical structures between Korean and Japanese, these languages reflect the interconnected histories of these nations. Yet, it's important to remember that despite these similarities, each language is a unique entity, deeply rooted in its own culture and identity. Thanks for joining us on this linguistic journey. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Multicultural Lingo for more explorations of language and culture from around the world. Until next time, happy language learning!